I'm gonna hack my studio lights to come on with a single button press from Home Assistant instead of using a physical remote using this. This thing is an RTL SDR, our software defined radio, and it's one of the coolest nerdy gadgets you can buy with your pocket money. This specific one is a clone of the official RTL SDR project, which itself is based on the AirSpy. These were originally digital TV tuners, a way to watch TV on a computer without needing a big set-top box, but the Realtek chip inside was quickly found to be a rather powerful bit of kit. See, most radio frequency chips are hard-coded to run at a specific frequency, or at least within a, a pretty limited band. The Wi-Fi radio in your phone only operates at 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz, give or take a few megahertz, either side. The little radio in my lighting remote control runs at the very common 433 MHz band, again, give or take a few kilohertz this time. And you'd be surprised how much of your everyday wireless tech is actually running at one of these lower frequencies. Car key fobs and TPMS sensors, for one, but things like RF and TV remotes, as long as they aren't infrared based anyway, air conditioning remotes, temperature sensors, FM radio, and so, so much more is all running at frequencies that this thing can see. It's all invisible to us, but if you have one of these bad boys, well, it's not anymore. It's actually pretty easy to use too. You'll need to use a program called Zadig to install the Win USB driver, and then you can use a software called SDR Sharp to start listening to the airwaves. You'll need to, to tune into a specific frequency or at least a band. So for FM radio in the UK, that would be between 88 and 108 megahertz. For remotes, that might be more like 300, 433, or even 868 megahertz in some more rare cases. There's actually a pretty easy way to find out what the device you want to listen to is using. Go to the FCC's database website and search for the device or manufacturer. In my case, that's Godox and the 2ABYNRC-A5, where you can see that it's listed as using 433.92 MHz. So I can now tune into that frequency and start listening. Pressing the uh on button immediately shows a spike and a code. Switching the lights off shows a different code. Being able to see this is really cool, and you want to have a play around with this. Listen, listen to some radio stations, try out all of the RF stuff in your house. It's a lot of admittedly nerdy fun. Of course, if you want to make use of this new tool, you'll need a few extra steps. These dongles cannot transmit at all, and even if they could, well, with the SDR Sharp, you aren't recording anything that you can replay. Instead, I would recommend you use a different bit of software called Universal Radio Hacker. You'll need to know as close to the exact frequency as possible, hence why I used SDR Sharp to pin it down to 433.879 MHz on the specific channel that I'm using here, and then you can record a signal. Once it starts recording, trigger a button press or something, and then once you've saved it, hit stop and actually save that file. You can then open it in the main window and see the byte code for the signal. In my case, to turn off the lights, it's the same signal repeated five times with about 30 milliseconds between each. Once you've got the code that you need to broadcast, this is where I need to give you a bit of a disclaimer. The way radio frequencies work, especially square wave frequencies that we'll be generating, well, they're really just sine waves that all add together to give you a complex wave. The key word here is harmonics, and basically that means that you have repeated spikes at multiples of the fundamental frequency, which in this case is 433.879 megahertz. Now, harm the harmonic peaks aren't uh, as strong, but you should always use a low pass filter when broadcasting to call out those higher frequencies that we don't need and can interfere with other devices and other uh, radio waves or wavelengths that you should definitely not be broadcasting at. 
You should also check your local laws to see if you're even allowed to broadcast on whatever frequency you're looking to broadcast on before doing so. Right, disclaimer done. Let me show you the coolest thing here. It turns out that a Raspberry Pi with a very clever bit of software called RPI-TX can bit bash one of the GPIO headers into a freaking radio transmitter. You just hook up a single uh, wire that acts as an antenna to GPIO 4 and it will actually transmit with enough power to reach at least a few meters to you know, control the electronics in the room that you're in. Again, you should be using a low pass filter on this, but for very local testing, a wire will suffice. Now, RPI-TX can actually do the signal capturing itself. If you plug the SDR into the Pi and run RTL underscore SDI, uh, SDR with the frequency you want to capture and give it a file name, it can capture whatever signal you want and save it to an IQ file, and then you can use uh, send IQ to broadcast that. Now, that didn't work for me reliably, but it might for you, so feel free to give it a try. But for me, I'll be using the send OOK command instead, where you'll set the frequency. In my case, I had to tweak the timings, set how many times to repeat it with dash R, and then just paste the bytecode from URH and hit enter. And as if by magic, my lights turn off. Now annoyingly, turning the lights on is actually a little more complicated as there's actually two different codes that repeat at different times, but I'll get that working too at some point. All that leaves us to do is integrate it with Home Assistant. And thanks to an excellent guide on GitHub, which will be linked in the description alongside a link to the SDR, uh, dongle, and the other guides and software that I've talked about in this video, it's actually pretty easy. You basically just have Home Assistant SSH into your Pi to run the command, and that's kind of it. Now, it doesn't technically know what state the switch is in, which isn't amazing, but I mean, it works and that's enough for me. Having access to a software defined radio is really cool. Being able to reverse engineer and remake stuff like the remote is something that I absolutely love. It's an incredibly versatile tool, and I was genuinely blown away by the ability to bodge a radio transmitter out of a Pi and a single wire. This is why I love open source projects, and considering these dongles are only about £30 or so, I think it's something I would highly recommend you pick up and have a play with. Just try not to get into too much trouble, yeah? Of course, with that said, that's, uh, well, my thoughts and my, uh, my sort of experience having a bit of a play and a bit of a reverse engineer as well. But if you have more experience with this, feel free to you know, leave some, uh, some knowledge in the comments so that we can all learn a bit more as well. I will link to the dongle, the guides, and all the software that I'm using in the description if you're interested. And if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon, as well as check out plenty of other videos in the end card too. The stuff like my Nanoleaf reverse engineering video, which I also need your help on, uh, so feel free to take a look at that. And otherwise, that's kind of it. Hope you enjoyed it, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.